Okay, adult Sunday school, as usual, feel free to talk, raise your hand, I'll ask you questions, everybody will read scripture, well not quite everybody, not the little kids. Um, Acts, uh, we're going to talk about Matthias and Paul, this is the conclusion of the series. Acts chapter 1, we're going to go through Matthias first, 1, 16, Peter speaking, Men, brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost, by the mouth of David, spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had, had obtained part of this ministry. Now, this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. We'll do a little rabbit trail for apologetics. People go, I thought he hung himself, but Acts chapter 1 says that he fell off some cliff and his bowels gushed out. So what is it? Ha, 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 I got you. There is no contradictions in the Bible. It's very simple. I have seen in Lake Tahoe, where I used to live, many a tree near the edge of a cliff or ravine that has branches sticking out over them. So he simply was up on there, and he hung himself on that branch, but it was near that edge, or over the edge possibly, and at some point the branch broke. And he fell down, and his bowels gushed out. And um, that's exactly how it happened. So they're both true. Uh, 19. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem. That's a great testimony. Everybody knew. That guy that turned into King Jesus, the Messiah, he's dead. He killed himself. His blood, the field of blood is still there with the 30 pieces of silver. Everybody knew it. I think that's great. All the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, I don't know how to say that, uh, silly de ma. That is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and that no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. A couple things there. Um, where there's graveyards, you cannot build. So the Muslims have copied that. So they put graveyards in different spots so people can't build. Uh, but it is biblical, and that is why when you read about Josiah, uh, it, he, he literally, that's why he took the bones. That's why he took the ashes. He did, I'm gonna, not only should destroy them completely and everything else, and then other times there was a no-name prophet that prophesied what would happen, and he said, no, you leave his sepulcher, you leave his bones there, so no one can ever build there. And so, you know, for saints, you are to respect the graveyards. Uh, like if, if I knew for 100% fact that dumb graveyard over there was 100% sinners, I would play football on it or soccer with my girls. If I, because I don't respect the dead that are that are sinners. The, the issue is there's a high chance with a, how strong Christianity was in America before that um, that um, you know a percentage of those are my brothers and sisters in heaven. And, or not to desecrate their graves and play soccer on top of it. I, I could have a Muslim uh, funeral, at a Muslim uh, funeral. Yeah, I'd have to ask the Muslim director, is this graveyard only filled with Muslims? And they say, yes, sir, that's our, our rule. I say, great. You guys are closed what day? Soccer. <laughs> I don't want to get arrested over that. But technically, you can. You're, Jesus said, that let the dead bury the dead. And so um, there would be certain places in theonomy that would not be rebuilt. And if you want a place not rebuilt, you just bury one Christian there. Mm -hmm. Right in the center. It's the whole, nope, that's a Christian graveyard. Can't touch it. That's it. And second point here is let his bishop group take, an, uh, let another take. So he was a bishop. Judas was a bishop. Matthias became a bishop. So was every apostle a bishop? Was every of the 12? Yes. Yes. What is a bishop? Pastor. A pastor. Every bishop is not just sitting in some cathedral, in some Ivy Tower college, like the Catholics do and think. No, every one of them is a local pastor that has other pastors in the same city that are accountable to him. Okay? And, um, and so a lot of people don't know that, but Judas was a bishop. Um, they, hadn't, they hadn't obviously went out and planted churches yet, but they were preaching the gospel, doing things, and the Bible says bishop. So Matthias was not just an apostle, Matthias was a bishop. Therefore, uh, excuse me, wherefore, of these men, so women are not on the list, right there, super obvious, 
but in case people need more scriptures or women should not be in leadership in the church, there it is. These men, which have accompanied with us all the time that Jesus, uh, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, so that's a qualification, they had to be there from the beginning, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day, that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. So some of these people backslid, like John 666, so they were disqualified. They might have been there from the baptism of John, but they backslid along that three and a half years. But they said all the way to the day that we saw Jesus going up, and there was 120 that saw him go up. And so there's only, you know, two that really qualified in um, not just Peter's mind. This is proof that Peter wasn't the bishop, 23. And they, you can underline that, they appointed two. Did it say Peter? Did it say James? No, they. These 11 really knew that um, uh, Matthias and Abar Sabas were the only two that were really qualified, that feared God, that had it in them, that were supportive from the beginning to the end, these guys. And then they hit a roadblock. <laughs> what do we do? What do we, what do, what, what do we do? You know, we've got, we've got uh, uh, 15 elder men in the church, and uh, the judge has uh, died. The civil judge has died. Uh, we uh, believe in the presbytery uh, through the episcopate, uh, and uh, that would mean that the elders would get to vote. Not the congregation. They ain't voting. They're babies. They don't know anything. The elders would get to say, we believe uh, this guy and this guy should be the next civil, civil judge. And the pastor doesn't have a veto vote. I'm just another elder that, that votes in that process, okay? When it comes to, you know, the chief of police, the civil judge. So the, my main thing is they have to be a Christian and they have to be an elder. Not a deacon, a Christian or an elder. They've understood. They've ruled their house. They've ruled their wife and their children for many years. Not two years, three years. Years with fruit, okay? And it's a simple vote. And two guys are presented forward that fear God, that qualify, everybody. What do you do? You're stuck. No, you're not stuck. God made a way. It's called throwing lots. The devil copycats everything. He calls it gambling and dice and, and, and everything like that. No, throwing lots is totally biblical. It's, it's in the book of Proverbs. It says that the, the, the lots of the man, but the outcome is of the Lord. I'm misquoting it, but it says the outcome is of the Lord. It's so biblical that even the heathen did it to find out which guy on the ship that Jonah was on was the bad guy causing the storm, and the lot fell on Jonah. And here it is in the book of Acts, and they did not miss it by throwing lots. This is your last resort on a certain type of decision. Making decisions, you should go to the Bible first, you should go to prayer, you should go to pastor, go to counsel, you should go to, you know, the multitude of counselors, you make war. Okay, but if at the very end, and you're at this point, you can pray and say, Lord, well, I'm just totally stuck. Like, we, we, got, we got to throw lots and figure out this thing as far as, you know, church leadership goes or picking a new chief of police or general for the army uh, out of the elders that are qualified. That's how it's done. It is done with lots. I'll do a whole teaching one day on lots. 23. James, you finish that chapter. And they appointed to Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, shew whether of these two thou hast chosen. 25. That he may take part of this ministry an apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, and he might go into his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Amen. Amen. Judas by transgression fell. Sounds pretty anti-Calvinistic to me. By transgression, what is sin? The transgression of the law. So he fell, he chose it, he's in hell. And so they all prayed together. They knew God knew the hearts. And the lot fell upon, uh, I, I think everybody called him Matthias. You can call him Matthias, I don't care. But Matthias. And he was numbered. And so that's it. We don't hear from him again. And people try to bag on him and make a church preacher say, oh, that was, you know, maybe not Paul replaced my. No, this guy was a bishop. This guy was an apostle. His name's written in the Bible. Your name isn't. My name isn't. Mega pastor guy's name isn't written. This guy's name is in the Bible. He's an apostle. He did some great works. I don't know what he did. History doesn't record. But uh, I'm not about to say anything negative on him because he's an apostle and a bishop. He 
He might have planted two churches, which is minimum requirement for an apostle. He might have planted 200. His two might have planted 200. He might have raised up the guy that, you know, helped the whole transition out of Jerusalem over to Antioch. Who knows? He might have died a crazy martyr. We don't know. We don't know. So we don't have to speculate. Just He's, he's one of the guys. We'll meet him in heaven. It's going to be awesome. It's my brother and the Lord. Uh, you know, he, he might have been uh, killed, uh, a martyr. He, he might not have been. We, we, just, we just don't know. All right, moving on to Paul then. Uh, Acts chapter 9. We're going to go through his testimony. And, uh, you know, let me just say this up front about Paul. I, in, in prayer and study and thinking about him, I'm like, there's just no way I'm going to do any justice in 40 minutes with Paul. There's just, there's just, no, there's just no way. You, you could easily have a good six-part series on it. Um, there is a little short 25-minute video I had my family watch a while back that I'll send you all. And you can just kind of get some good historical context that kind of breaks it down. Did you watch that? Did I send it to you? And I did send it to you so. about two weeks ago? No. Maybe three. Okay, I'll, I'll just remind me of dinner. I'll send it to you all. And that kind of gives you some historical one, but I, I can't do it in 40 minutes. So what we're going to look at is his testimony. And most of his letters, his writing in the epistles were doctrine. Doctrine, instruction, doctrine. But there are some pretty good sections that he talks about himself. So we're going to read those sections where he like, he's like, okay, well, let me tell you about you know me a bit. Uh, but a lot of it is, is, is doctrine. So we're going to skip the doctrine part. We did that in another puzzle. We're going to see what, what he said about himself and a few things that he did. And uh, like I said, it, I'm just not going to be able to do it fully justice. So go ahead, James. Uh, 9, 1 through 5. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter <laughs> against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Man, there's a lot you could preach in there. He said, Lord. When God gives you an experience, you know it's God. And, 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 am I the only one, and this has only happened to me two or three times, where late three in the morning, the Spirit of God just falls on me. And I just know it. Has that happened? And, and no, no, has that ever happened to anybody else here? <laughs> anybody else, the Spirit of God? Just, how about in the daytime, not in the nighttime? Anytime has the Spirit of God ever just, thank you, thank you, and I know you told me once, right? A few years back, it was like, you told me once, and I don't know why. When it's God, you just know it. But he's like, what is your name? <laughs> he's just like, I know you're God. This is definitely Yahweh. This is the Lord. And he called him Lord before he knew his name. Didn't that mean he was saved? A lot of people have powerful spiritual experiences. doesn't mean they're saved. He didn't get saved until he got baptized three days later. God preserved him for those three days. I got no problem waiting a day for somebody to get baptized. Zero problem with it, you know. Um, so he said, Lord, he says, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Was Paul actually punching Jesus? Was no. Paul locking up Jesus in the jail? We are his body. He was punching Jesus. He was locking Jesus up. Okay? It's kind of a trick question. He was. He was. I am Jesus, whom thou Persecuted. Persecuted. I mean, when they spit on James yesterday at Temple, and they, the faggot threw the flower on, on Levi, and I like Levi's line, you're not the first fag to throw a flower at me. <laughs> and um, I got spared, praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, hey, I, I'm, I'm not a glutton for punishment. <laughs> There'll be times I get straight smacked, hit, locked up, and nothing happens to you. Don't feel bad. It's just not that day. Uh, they persecuted Jesus. They persecuted Jesus yesterday. Right now, they persecute Jesus over in the other countries. And he takes it very personal. And at some point, he just snaps their brain and kills them. And at some point, he may knock them down and get them converted. You know, uh, they still have to submit to that conversion. But it, there's a lot there. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Okay, so I'm going to have my wife read now then. Six and seven and eight. And he, trembling, astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the 
Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. So later Paul blinds our Jesus, the sorcerer. Where did he learn that from? <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Jesus blinding. And uh, the other people, did they see God, or did they just hear a voice? Kids? Yes? Hear a voice? Hear a voice. They heard a voice. People hear things out there. People hear. One time Jesus, the Father spoke to Jesus in the flesh, you know, spoke to himself in the flesh. And some of them said they heard thunder, and some of them said they heard a voice. They heard different things. We will be preaching, and they will hear different things. If you backslide in this church, you will hear me say something else I didn't say. How do you think they twist the word? Mm -hmm. They actually read it and they hear it differently. Be careful how you hear what you hear. And so they, they, they just twist right off the page to their twisted heart. And God wrote it in such a way that people can come up with crazy stuff like Mormons and polygamy and prosperity gospel and they can do that. Uh, because God says, fine, I'll hand you over your delusion. Even give you the thing that makes you think it's justified. And so, he said, speak. These, guys, these guys heard a voice. They didn't see a man. We don't know if they ever got saved later. Uh, Alina, verse uh, 9. And he was there three days and Anybody else know the times there's a three-day fast with no food and water? Moses, I believe. We don't know if Moses had water or not. We know he didn't have food. 40 days, came down, went back up, 40 more days, no food. He could have had water, could have not. I don't I don't I think Elijah too, but I think right. it was just food with him. Also. Yeah. I'm talking about remember. three days. Anybody know of a famous oh, yeah. three-day one? Esther. Yeah. Esther. Sorry. The whole story. Everybody. Anybody else know another one? You got it? Go ahead and say it. Wait. You told me the other day, and I literally cannot remember. <laughs> so I remember your... Nineveh. Other one. Yes, that's what it was. The heathen fasted. Yes. They didn't let their cows drink water for three days. They were so scared from Jer Jonah, Jonah's preaching. They're just freaking out. And so, you know, so this, uh, that's... He, he, knew, he knew the story of Jonah and Nineveh. He knew the story of Esther. And he's like, I just saw God. He's like, I'm not going, I'm so hungry. I'm not going to eat or drink water for three days because I am that hungry for God. All right, because I 10, 11. And there was a certain disciple of Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed. I mean, I just love the Lord's humor. I mean, he's just so anti homo, he literally called the street straight. <laughs> it's like, the street is called Straight Street. Amen. Okay, but that's not my point. Ananias. After this chapter, do we ever hear from this guy really again? No. So it doesn't seem like that important. But this one act he did changed the course of Christianity, history, multitudes of souls, multitudes of discipleship. And you, you will live a normal Christian life. You will pray. You will read your Bible. As long as you stay saved, you'll support, you'll help. You don't know in 10 years and 15 years, you might just do one act for one person on one thing that just changes a whole state, country, nation, that, 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 that person's like, whoa, that was God working through you. And you'll be like, wow, that's great. But you still have to obey. And it may not be a vision, but it may be a vision. You still have to obey. So he obeyed, and this, this powerful thing happened. Um, Rachel, take us down to 16. And after seeing any vision, a man named Amos coming in and putting his on him if he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he 
hath done this by saints at Jerusalem, and hath here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Amen. Amen. He's going to suffer. He said, I'm going to show him he's going to suffer. He, he reaped what he sowed. He beat Christians. He got beaten. He threw Christians in jail. He got thrown in jail. He killed some Christians. He got killed in all of God's timing. But he was chosen for that. Uh, so we'll have the back row over here now. So JC 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house. And putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, this was after the Spirit of God already touched him three days earlier. And this happened at baptism. And things were clicking at that point forward. Okay. Uh, so, Caden, you ready to read 18? Nice and loud. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scaled, and he received sight forwith and around and was baptized. Amen. And so this 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 filled with the Holy Spirit right before baptism is is biblical. It happened to Cornelius too. Cornelius spoke in tongues his whole family, then they were baptized. I've seen many times it's after baptism, but it doesn't really matter. It's boom, boom. It's the, it's the natural birth. There's four points to the natural Christian birth. Most in America are stillborn, which is why they're messed up or halfway born. It's repentance. It's faith toward God. Baptism, receive the Holy Spirit. Okay? So if they put off their baptism a few years or they put off asking the Holy Spirit to fill them, or they put off, of course, repentance, they're not even starting, <laughs> you know, faith in Jesus. So that's, this is the natural flow. He went through it very quickly. Uh, Brother Levi, take us to verse 20. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples, which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. Amen. So right off the bat, he's a few days with the disciples. I don't know if he came into town Monday or Friday or whatever, but that Saturday hit, he's going and preaching at the synagogues. He's preaching it quick, and it was such good preaching, they wanted to kill him. And that's how you know it's good preaching. And they would have wanted to kill us the other day if the cops weren't there. I mean, they say it. They're like, if these cops aren't here, we'd kill you. I mean, they, they say, it. which of course, we're not just laying there and let it happen. We'd probably end up hurting them very bad, uh, which is fine with me. Um, you know, but uh, that's 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 good preaching. So that's what he did. All right, let's go to First Corinthians chapter nine, and uh, let's just kind of look at a little bit of what Paul himself said. There's a lot of its doctrine, but we're going to see what he said here. So First Corinthians, uh, still you Levi, nine twenty-five to twenty-seven. And every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So did he know he could leave the Lord and go to hell? Yes. Yeah, Paul knew that. If Paul knew that, you better know that. And his key was I keep under my body and bring it, it into subjection. So he's talking about his body like it's a vehicle or a shoe. It. My body. And so... 
who's in charge? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you know, the better there's a proverb that says better is the man that keeps his spirit than him that takes a city. I'm misquoting it, but better that better that man that keeps his spirit than him that can take a city. And and the best from a theonomy perspective is I take a city and keep your spirit home. <laughs> okay. Because if you can keep your spirit, you can end up taking the city. If enough men can do that. And um the guy that beat at the air reminds me of a softball preacher. Everybody just kind of walking by. He's just beating the air. He's like a loud, clanging cymbal. It's super annoying. Nobody pays attention to. There's no flow there. All right. Um, let's go to chapter 15, verse 32. Uh, James. What was it again? Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 32. <clears throat> if after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage if it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. If after the men I fought with beasts. So does this sound like you did all night prayer meeting, praying in tongues and fasting? No. It says after the manner of men. May men fight, wrestle, thing. What does God call homos? Some of, some of the synonyms. Beast. Beast. Brute beast. And dogs. Mm -hmm. In his history of Acts 18, 19, and the rest of Acts of him in Ephesus, does it ever say he got thrown to the lions? Did Paul ever get thrown to the lions? No. Not in Ephesus, not in Rome, not ever. None of them were thrown to the lions until after the apostles were dead and gone. They didn't start throwing them to the lions until later. They crucified them. They beheaded them. They stabbed them. They burned John in oil. Uh, the lions weren't, I don't know exactly when, but it wasn't until a little bit later. So clearly, we should not over-spiritualize this. So my question I wrote down is, was Paul a pacifist? No. Did he let Homo steal his banners? <laughs> no. <laughs> we can't say he had banners, but we can't say he didn't have banners. The Bible doesn't say. So I can't speak for it, and neither can anybody else. That's the rule in hermeneutics, theonomy, theology. If it's silent, you can't speak for it, which means you can't either. <laughs> you probably didn't need one because he's a good tech guy and a good communicator, and he can he just stand and just preach and anointings upon him. But, you know, they had a new sign that says Jesus is the king. And they're like, oh, yeah, good Timothy, I like that started <laughs> you know i don't need a banner to go show up in tariff temple university i can just stand there and it'll go <laughs> i don't even need a jesus shirt you know i was teasing the guys the other day we're walking out and i'm like wait a minute i'm the only guy with a jesus shirt you guys look like thugs that's cool <laughs> it doesn't matter so anyways he wrestled with beefs he wasn't a pacifist he talked about himself people miss it uh, they over spiritualize it because they're fake spirituality Super spirituality is a cloak for carnality. There's a good quote for you. Um, 2 Corinthians 11.16. And uh, he's, he's going to... Um, the context here in the beginning, I'll just go ahead and read and I'll, I'll tell you. So James, read from 16 uh, to 21. I say again, let no man think me a fool, if otherwise yet as a fool receive me, that I may boast myself a little. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly, foolishly in this confidence of boasting. Seeing that as many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For ye suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. Verse 20. For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. I speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak. Howbeit, wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Okay. Context, false apostles. That's literally a couple verses right above verse 13. That's the context. And he's saying, fine, you guys like to get smacked around by those guys, get taken advantage of, they brag upon themselves, they brag about their jets, their mansion. Fine, I can play a little foolishly game too. Go away, you guys like to suffer fools gladly. You, you like this abuse. 
Yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go. I'll, I'll go there for a little bit. It's biblical and it's fine. So for, for the record, I've said this before, I do not think I'm the best chess player around or the smartest guy around or I have the most sexy calves on the planet. Anytime I preach that out there, it is self against myself. My brother is bigger and stronger than me. He whooped me growing up for many years. I beat him wrestling in once. It was like one of the best days of my life, next to getting married. <laughs> he beats me in chess half the time. You know? Uh, so clearly, if you do certain types of things that are, you can speak as the foolish, the foolish, okay, fine. We'll go, we'll go that route for a little bit. Now, you can't cross over into course jesting. You can't cross over into other things, you know? So just, just be aware of what, what, the, the lines there. But Paul absolutely did that, and he's about to do it a whole lot here. 22. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of God? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labor is more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. In deaths oft. I've got many death threats. Have you? That's what he's saying. Of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes, save one. Dumb Jews don't even know how to count to 40. They always stop to 39. Judaizer. Thrice I was beaten with rods. That means the Romans beat them. The Romans beat harder than the Jews. The Jews had a restraint level that they were required to do with their whip. The Romans straight up beat them, sticks, rods, baseball bats, who knows? Breaking stuff. It was bad. Three times. That's eight total. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered a shipwreck. A night and a day have I been I in the deep. Now you guys from Bible study two years ago remember this trip question. How many times was Paul shipwrecked? You know, Levi? Three or four? It says thrice. Yeah, but it was four. Because of the context, which is why we keep learning our Bible, we learn these timelines, we see these things, is this is when he wrote current, current uh, he's still in Ephesus, it's around Acts, I think, 18, 19, and at the end of Acts, he gets shipwrecked one more time. Malta? On, on the way, yeah, Malta, on the way to Rome. Malta hadn't happened yet, <laughs> so four times he's shipwrecked. Mm. Yeah, so it's quite funny with, with fake preachers like, uh, uh, Ruben's friend who plays for Billy Graham, he did what's called a knowledge drop. It's called knowledge shaming. It's a guru tactic. You don't even know the names of the 12 disciples. Can you name them? Can you name the 12 uh, tribes of the land? If you can't even name them, you've got no other thing. You idiot. We can knowledge drop on you all day long if we want to and make you look stupid. How many times was the ship wrecked? Three, idiot. I forgot Malta. <laughs> Let me give you another one. <laughs> yeah. Not, I mean, they're, they're just pathetic. I don't care if you kids, I actually forgot all 12 named disciples, I'll be honest with you. I was thinking about it, I was like, I'm gonna die, is this one, is this one, I'm gonna look at my paper. <laughs> I don't remember the 12 names. Am I saved? <laughs> if you don't remember all 12 names, I don't care, and God doesn't care, but you remember the main, the kind of things. Okay, Dowling Thomas, but he did more than that. Don't remember people by their one mistake. Remember all the good things he did. This guy, Nathaniel, oh, he had no guile. Wow, no guile. He never even told that to Peter, James, and John, his top three, but he told it to him. Nathaniel with no guile, but he's not one of the three. He's not the inner circle. So what? So what? You can be on the, you can be on the outside and God will give you one of the greatest compliments. He might be at the right hand. He, Nathaniel, he might be that one. And you remember the main points of the guys. Does anybody know all 12 tribes? Right now, he's given to me. Give me a piece of candy. I get to say that now more often because there's more kids. It's great. I never said that before. Anybody? I'm not going to put you to shame for it because I don't do knowledge shame because it's pointless and stupid and all it does is blow up your own ego. And by the way, I can't name all 12 of the tribes either. <laughs> but I can name like seven, eight, nine. Ten. If I sat on paper and did it for a while, I might, I might be able to get it by this one and that one. I know which ones were eliminated. <laughs> Dan and Miss, uh, Manasseh. They're not in the Revelation part. They eliminate those fag huggers and uh, people. Did you know that Jesus was supposed to come out of the line of Manasseh? He was. This was prophesied. Yeah, they've screwed up so bad, free will. He came out of the tribe of Judah. That's in your Bible. So anyways, I just, I don't know why that idiot cowboy came up into my mind just now, but I hate that video we did with the devils. So, Paul, that's right. Four times shipwrecked. Uh, all right, my wife will read now. Go, go 26 to 30. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my 
own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the sea, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watching off, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Oh, I found out. Uh, in fastings often, I firmly believe many of his fastings were forced fast. Because the context is I was swimming in the ocean for two days. I was uh, beaten. I was pain. I was in jail. Yes, Paul fasted. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely. But this fasting off is not saying he was fasting every single week like the Pharisees did to be seen of men. So, you know, I don't fast once a week. I don't care if you do or not. That's up to you. I do fast and we do church fast. But, uh, you know, just for context that, that he absolutely was not. Uh, he was in jail a lot. Forced, forced fast. All right. Keep reading. Besides those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches, who is weak, and I am not weak, who is uh, off, uh, who is offended, and I uh, burn not. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern my infirmities. Who is offended, and I burn not? True preachers don't burn out. You're going to burn out because you get arrested. You're going to burn out because you got to double preach. You're going to burn out because you got spit upon. You're going to burn out because one of your kids backslid. No, it just all motivates me more. It's just like, uh, you know, I wish I could work less and preach more. That's all that does to me. And so who's offended? He goes, these false apostles are going to get offended. They don't even know Psalms, all those that love thy law. Nothing shall offend them. They don't even know that. And in another spot, he says, I will, when I come, I will know them not by word but by their power. I'll know the power that they walk in by the way they enforce. That's where you know where the power is at, is by the enforcement. Does that mama have power? I don't know. Do her kids respect her? Does that dad have power? I don't know. Do the kids respect her? Do they enforce? You know? He wasn't moved by miracles. Paul had more miracles than all those false prophets put together. And he said, I care for all the churches. He didn't just say, I care for my church as I planted. He didn't plant Jerusalem, but he took up an offering to take money to Jerusalem. That is a pastor's heart, to care for all the churches. You've heard me pray in prayer meeting many times, and you'll hear it till the day I die. Lord, bless every true church. Bless every true preacher, because I don't know which ones they are. I just know there's not that many of them in America. And when they closed down in COVID, it sure was nice to get some vindication that they were a bunch of cowards. All right, chapter 12. Any questions before we go to chapter 12 on this? I've been preaching a lot. Yes, or comments. Comments or questions. I know Paul. Uh, there's a, this. Paul gives his testimony again, and the same story that we read in Acts, talking about when the Lord met him on the road. Yes. Uh, it was different. There were some things that were different about what other people saw during yeah. that time. Like some, I think it does say some saw uh, or heard thunder, others heard a voice, or some saw light, some didn't, yes. or something like that. Which backs up what you were saying too. How some people are going to hear some things and others. Yeah, some, some, some might have saw a light from heaven or some might have, yeah, they, they perceived it differently based on their level of sin in their life is what I think, you know. I mean, that's why reprobates say things like, you threatened to murder me, <laughs> you know. By the way, you want a preacher test. If you want to know if someone's reprobate, if they ever stay to you, and this happens to me at least two or three times a year, they say, you're full of the devil. If they say, you're full of the devil, that guy's a reprobate. Very simple, very simple one. Because literally we're full of Jesus, and Jesus in the context of the reprobate and be forgiven, he just did a miracle. Not even in the name of Jesus, he is Jesus, he just does the miracle. They get then then they said, You did the miracle by Bezelbub. And then he says, Oh, you can you know, blaspheme the Father and blaspheme the Son and blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You know, my spirit that does that miracle, I never hope you never be saved. You know, and so the people that say that, they're reprobates. You know. So I I treat them like I treat a homo. When, when somebody says it, not just to me, when they say it to anyone, it's us preaching, you are full. Not like you're influenced by the devil or you guys have a bad spirit. They literally look at you and they say, you are full of the devil. You are full of Satan. And half of them are religious and half of them are straight atheists. And they say it with full conviction. I say, you can never be saved. You're going to hell. And then in your mind, you need to click. That guy's like a fact. No point in reasoning with him. Don't try to do one-on-ones with him, Levi. If they ever say that to any of us, no one-on-ones with that guy. He's right for They're done. Holy biblical, it's in the Bible. Uh, chapter 12, verse 7. This is a really heavy one. Um, Alina, you good to read it real fast? Before you blow your nose? Okay, 11, 7. 
Uh, sorry, yeah, 12-7. Um, what I should be consulted with measure through the abundance of the web of emotions. Now, was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan, to work it to me, lest I should be consulted of that measure. Amen. There was a demon inside of a person. He was a Judaizer, and he followed him around, and tried to mess up every church Paul planted. And um, and Paul figured, you know, God has actually given me this opposition to make me stronger, to make me better. And that is maturity. When you realize, you know, some of these oppositions that we have and get is for my own good, for my own benefit. That not everything is easy. The, the, the cocoon is, is ugly. If you help the butterfly get birthed early, kids, and you cut open that cocoon to get that nice pretty butterfly out that you want to see, it's going to fall out a dead caterpillar or a deformed caterpillar or an ugly caterpillar. It's going to take some time and some pushing and some effort and some grinding for it to break out itself and then be a beautiful butterfly. And so God absolutely has some thorns in the flesh and some oppositions and some things for his glory. And Paul said it. And that's the revelation of verse 7. That's something you should meditate on, saints. Because I, 8 and 9. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Amen. And we, we memorized that. We memorized that before. And uh, it, 9 and 10 are great. And here's what I got differently out of it is he said, I prayed three times. And did God answer him the first time, second time, or third time? Uh, uh, three times. Yeah, the third time. Which means twice, maybe for months in between, he's just confused. <laughs> like, well, you've answered these other. What is going Lord, I'm asking again. Can you get this? Wicked Judaizer that's trying to mess up our church, your churches out of here. Let them drop that something. Three and finally after the third prayer, then God answers him. We, it might have been three days later, might have been three years. I don't know the timeline, but it was like no answer. So you think sometimes you are a little like uh, feel alone because you didn't get an answer from God. Uh, Paul didn't get an answer for a while, and then God spoke to him, and it really hit home. And sometimes when you uh, think of your child asking you a question and then you just they're going to zone in a little bit more to listen to that answer right Paul's asking nothing Paul's asking nothing he's asking again maybe in a fast maybe for the third time and then God speaks and says my grace is sufficient for you Paul James, Levi, Mary, Rachel, JC, Keziah. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in mine infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So, God spoke only a sentence, and Paul spoke through us. God said, my grace is sufficient for thee, Personalize it. Put your name in the Bible right there. You're allowed to at times. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Then they really should do a new scripture verse there. To, so you know Paul's talking now. Because now Paul says, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Then one of the most meaty scriptures in the whole Bible, Rachel, verse 10. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and in reproaches and necessities and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sakes. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And probably the first three years of street preaching, I'm like, oh man, persecution, oh man. I didn't put pleasure in it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But you get to a point, you're like, you just love the hate. It was like, you got anything else to say to me? <laughs> you know, give me some more slander. Give me some more. Because God's going to work it all out. God wins it. There's nothing they can do to stop it. And that's what makes them so mad because they can't stop it. They can't stop it at all. They can't stop it. Did these scriptures minister to you? Yes. Paul gave this to us for our edification. Very rare did he talk about himself. 
All right, wrapping up, let's see him rebuke Peter. Galatians 2.4. Right after their uh, second Corinthians, a couple pages. So, uh, JC, verse 4. And that because of false brethren unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. From Caden, verse 5. To whom we give a place by subjection, no, not. For an hour that, that the truth of the gospel continue with you. Yeah. Wow, I just got something new out of this. I was, I was going to preach to you and tell you, I guess I'll do them both, is that they didn't give space for one hour. So, uh, yeah. I mean, we, we can't give, we maybe give them five minutes, that's fine, I don't know, but you can't give them an hour. <laughs> we can't. We can't suffer their thing, their madness for at least 45 minutes dog barking sermons and whatever else because sitting there and being silent is being subjected and being under that subjection and that long and so you know I, I, I gave faggot Cope an extra five minutes to see how much worse he'd dig himself in before I already knew I was going to rebuke him but I would not let that go for 15 minutes no way at all there's a point where it is sub subjection um, let me show you an example I only use my wife put down your pen and pretend I'm a stranger. Hi, nice to meet you. That is so good to meet you. I really enjoy your thing. Like, like I'm starting to kind of rub on her hand a little bit. At some point, you are under subjection if you don't pull away. And he said, uh, these Judaizers came in, and we didn't give them place nothing for not even a, not even an hour. Which is interesting, you didn't say five minutes, and it kind of gives you a little, a little time. But there is a timeline, 60 minutes, that's it. You better do something, you better make your choice. There's your, there's your deadline. But I just got the revelation of the word we. The whole time I'm thinking it's all Paul by himself. All Paul. He showed up. Who did he show up with in this one? I think he had Silas. This one he went back, I think, with Silas and Timothy. Uh, he had two of the guys with him. Amen. So he had, he had a couple brothers with him. We. Uh, all right, uh, Caden, did you just read that? Is that you that just read? All right, so Levi, take us up to verse 12. <clears throat> uh, from 6. But of these who seem to be somewhat, whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. God accepteth no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in confidence added nothing to me. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter. For he that wrought effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, yeah. and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of the fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Just let me pause here real fast. Uh, the, this just more proof that those three were like the main pillars of the church. James, Cephas is Peter, and John. James, John, and Paul. And it says, they gave to me and Barnabas. So who decided to finally let this guy that Paul was killing Christians and locking them up? They did not just let him into church right off the bat. Which is why some people won't have my new address because I will have church there at times in the deep winter. And you don't want to drive 20 minutes in the snow. The congregation didn't make that choice. The elders didn't even make that choice. The pastor, the main pastor, the, they they were the ones that finally said, "You know what? We we do think Paul has been converted. Sure, let him in. Very important. Very important. And especially uh, end times go, and we don't know how it's going to." really go down completely besides Armageddon coming and the Lord comes after that. Alright, keep bringing all the way to um, 12. Only they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Did you withstood him on the Facebook? Or did he withstand him to the text? To the face. 
That's where it needs to be. Keep reading. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. Fearing them. Mighty Peter. Fearing men. The fear of man bringeth a snare. He must have been impressed by their intellect, probably by their knowledge shaming. So these guys were hardcore Judaizers. And Peter was just an unlearned fisherman. These guys knew the law of God. They knew the Sabbath law. They knew the pork law. They knew the fabric law. They knew all this stuff. Peter's like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. It's in there. It is in there. It is in there. Kind of never really occurred to him that Jesus didn't care and didn't teach him that for three years. You know? He showed him these things that he's like showing typology of fulfillment, showing typology of fulfillment. And then he kind of forgot what he actually preached in Acts 2 about all this. But whatever. Messed him up, jacked him up. I believe if he didn't repent in five minutes, Peter would have lost his salvation. Fully believe that. But, you know, the Bible says when the righteous are rebuked, it's like an excellent oil. I'm glad it's like excellent. So it's like Paul's, boom! He's like, whoa. Hey, I'm sorry, guys. Let me sit over here and eat with y'all. That's what he did. And he never brought it up once in one of his letters. Church history, nothing. No grudge, nothing. He never brought it up one time at all. Showing he was a he was a righteous man. He did not leave the Lord, but he was right on that line. And you can't do that for five more minutes. All right, fin, go ahead and just take us all to sixteen there. Uh, yeah, leave that. Go ahead and take us to sixteen. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, if Privately? That... I took him aside? Or in front of everybody? In front of everybody. Thank you. Keep going. If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Is that get that ceremonial law trash out. The whole book of Galatians, which is the very first book written in the New Testament, Mark is the second book. The very first book is against Judaism. Judaizers. And he brings up this specific example. Shows you. The last book in the Bible is 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, which is against hypergrace, which is against the license of sin. So God just sandwiches those two main issues right there. And so the early church historically had this issue. We, as the latter-day church, as the end times, which I believe we're in, have the issue of the hypergrace. And 99% of the fake Christians are hypergrace. But the truth is, Judaizers are hypergrace too. They just don't eat pork and they, you know, think it's Saturday Sabbath and they do other things and what whatnot. It's a, it's a Judaizer spirit. It's not salvation pending. But I'm saying they get to the point where they start dividing the body of Christ over this and pulling preachers and doing these things. Then that is salvation pending. And, and later, James the, the, in Acts 15 even let them in the meeting, let them all talk, and they were all laid all exposed. And over time, all all of them were rooted were rooted out. You know. And that's what Hebrews 6 comes into. So that if they were a Jew and they got saved and they apostatized, they can never be saved. That's like slitting the lamb's throat over again, spitting on the blood of Jesus. That is the context of the guy that can never be saved again, the Jews that get saved. Um, before I wrap up, any questions about Galatians 2 or comments? So would Peter have fallen into that if he started to go back to... Yep. Would it just be he would have been, would been, would, he would have become a reprobate. Not, uh, I mean, would it have just been in knowledge at this point where he's like, man, I okay, I'm really considering what you guys are saying. I am separating myself. Um, and yes, I do believe what you're saying. Or is it right when he goes to start sacrificing? Then it's like, no. Oh, no. By the time they sacrifice, then that's too late. Yeah. You are in the bedroom with the girl. Yeah. It's done then. You're, 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 you're not, you're not, that's not, you know. Well, not that you should be holding hands for five minutes. <laughs> you know, yeah. That's not my point. But you've no, they say the sacrifice enough. He would have left the church. How's he getting communion? 
What's he going to do? Take communion underneath them? No. You know? But these Judaizers are white. They're super intelligent. These guys are smart. But they add nothing to me. So at times different sermons, I'll say, yeah, yeah, I, it added nothing to me. You know exactly what I'm referring to. And you'll get to that point. You'll grow. You'll listen to something. Nah, it added nothing to me. Nah, I don't even want to listen to that guy ever again. They added nothing to me. And that's, that's when you know you're growing. Um, all right, so in closing, um, he was in jail for two years in Rome in his own rented house. He got to preach to Nero, who was a reprobate. But he was preaching to everybody in the court and preaching to the civil government. Okay? So, yes, Biden's a reprobate. If I had a chance to preach to him and the people around him, absolutely I would do it. He's not the target. It's the glory of God. And then he um, got free. He may have went to Spain, may not have. Went, may have went to Britain, may not have been planted churches. We, we don't. The history is very divided on these things. But at some point he was back in Rome and um, Nero burned down a third of Rome and blamed it on the Christians. And history knows, that even secular history now knows that he started the fire himself. And many of the other people thought he did. And the Christians were feeding the poor. And they didn't like him, but they weren't doing bad things and stuff. And, and he's like, nah, it wasn't them, really. But they just knew how crazy Nero was. He was a faggot actor. You know, a bad actor, too. But they all complimented him. You know, he killed his own mom, killed his wife, total psychopath. And so he burns down a bunch of Rome, blames on the Christians. And they're like, who's the leaders? Paul's one of the leaders. Oh, yeah, okay, bring him over here. And then they beheaded him. Why was Paul not crucified like Peter and the others? You know? Tell me. Because he was a Roman citizen. Good job. Don't shame the other kids with the knowledge, though. Knowledge puffeth up, but love edifieth. Good job, because he's a Roman citizen. So he didn't have to. Which leads me to my next point. Could Paul have requested to be crucified? Yeah. Are the Romans like super seductive, sadist? They probably would have. Oh, okay, sure. We'll comply with that. You want it upside down too, like Peter? Uh -huh. But did he ask for the cross? No. What does that tell you? Paul, let me ask you, was Paul a glutton for punishment? No. He was not a glutton for punishment. And you shouldn't be a glutton for punishment. Oh, I exercise my First Amendment rights. Of course I'll have the cops work for me and the barricades around me and get more stuff done. Yeah, and if it wasn't there, I'd still preach and I'd get spit on ten times and beat and hit and this, and I'd have to turn the other cheek a lot because it's a mob and i get all that. And I wouldn't even go with a banner and a bullhorn because I already know how rough it's going to be every time. Or a hoodie because they can pull on it. I'd just do a straight sweater style, you know, and just hold that ground. And until, until I wore them out. And I wouldn't be able to hit 48 campuses. I'd probably have three or four campuses I could do really good. Because once you beat them down enough, they just find it like, that dude's just crazy. But they didn't get the seekers. We don't even be a glutton for punishment. Paul, Paul wrestled with the beasts in Ephesus because they weren't cops and they weren't allowed to steal his tents. The only time he submitted in jail is when the civil authorities came and grabbed him and took him. So you're not wrestling the cops. That's stupid. Don't ever do that. If you get cuffed, just be like a Christian man. All right, let's do it. Let's go. You know? I mean, wait till they cuff you. I know they almost cuffed my wife in Philly because she hit this pedophile guy because of the kids with the with the sign. It was right there, it was right there. It's like bam with the sign that young Mexican cop. Oh, they do arrest you, this and that. We just start yelling at the cop. This guy's a pedophile, arrest him. This guy says bad something. That's a brain. We're filming you right now. This and that. He's like, no, turn around. He's like starting to put the cuff. I'm like, move your hand over here. Come over here. And I was like, no, you're not doing that. So you better call civil affairs right now. So you know who who we are. You know what you're doing. You're gonna get a lawsuit, man. I'm just hammering this dude. And it, it, we were arguing for like five minutes. He was serious about arresting like this. And, I, and finally, one of the sergeants came over and knew who we were. They're like, hey, just leave, leave them alone. I said, how long are you guys going to be here? I'm like, we're leaving in like 20 minutes. Tell your officer the first amendment, please. The guy's clueless. Remember that? Yeah. That was, that was actually where the haunted house is at. But it wasn't a haunted house for vehicles. It was some other event they had there. All right, we're done. Any other last questions or comments? Don't be a glut for punishment, but you will get persecuted at times. You know, that's kind of the point. He did not request the, the cross. Paul did not request it. Anybody? Women and children, last chance to talk. <laughs> talk in prayer. Not in service. Amen. Well, we're going to pray.